As the French army left the port of Brest on May 4, 1755, few women and children followed the French army from France. Embarkation records for the six battalions of army regulars leaving Brest included only 21 women and children with 3,597 soldiers. The next year, Louis-Joseph de Montcalm, the newly appointed commander-in-chief of the French forces in Canada, left his own wife and family behind, often writing to them throughout the French and Indian War. After the Battle of Carrion on July 8, 1758, the bloodiest day of the war, he endearingly wrote his wife of the success of the French army, explaining the victory over such superior British army on the heights of Carrion. He ended his letter with, I am well and embrace you, my dearest, as I do my mother. While marriage was discouraged among soldiers in France itself, as the war continued, French soldiers were allowed and then encouraged to marry Canadian women. In a letter from Montreal to the Minister of War, Comte d'Argenson, on April 24, 1757, Marquis de Montcalm not only wrote of his approval of these marriages, he observed 80 that winter alone as French soldiers quartered in Canadian homes each winter. Languedoc Lieutenant Jean-Baptiste Delirac remarked on the appearance of these Canadian women in his A Brief Description of Canada. Delirac noted, the women are beautiful and spiritual. They wear petticoats that scarcely go down to the calves. At least some of these women ended up close to the front lines at Carrion and at other sieges as they followed their husbands to the posts across French Canada in each campaign season. Connecticut provincial soldier Abel Spicer noted shortly after he landed at the north end of Lake George on July 6, 1758, that as we landed, here was three Frenchmen and a woman taken by our regulars. Though how this woman ended up left behind at the abandoned French camp, she was indeed there, right behind the front lines. No more is this true than in 1759 during the siege of Fort Niagara. In his 1781 published memoirs, Bayern Captain Pierre Pouchot described the presence and roles of the women as he commanded the defense of the fort. Pouchot described the women acted as nurses together with two ladies called Duville and also sewed cartridge bags and made sac a terre. As the British dug their parallels closer to the fort's walls, the defensive guns on the bastions of Fort Niagara were in desperate need of ammunition to continue firing on the approaching siege lines. Running out of wadding, women alongside soldiers grabbed anything they could use to make more. Pouchot recalled that we used blankets and shirts from the magazines for cannon wads. Exhausting materials in the storehouse, these women helped cut open mattresses from the soldiers' beds, making wads from the straw within, and ultimately cut the mattresses themselves into pieces for wadding. During the height of the siege, the important flag bastion was so severely battered by the British guns that batteries had to be moved and reinforced with sac a terre, or sandbags. After 19 days of fighting, articles of capitulation were signed on July 24, 1759. The next day, the women of the garrison became British prisoners of war alongside French soldiers. By August 1759, 12 French and Canadian women followed captured French forces into captivity on Long Island. There, they worked odd jobs along with the soldiers to support themselves while hoping to be exchanged for British and American prisoners in French custody. As of November 1759, British General Geoffrey Amherst listed only a woman and her daughter among exchanged prisoners. This woman and her daughter followed soldiers, officers, and Canadian workmen up the Hudson River to Saratoga. From there, they hiked overland to the sawmill to the west of Fort Ticonderoga. With the modest shelter of the mill, they remained with these soldiers under guard until allowed to pass through British-controlled Crown Point. There, they rode in bateau over Lake Champlain before it fully froze for the year, making it home after risking their lives on the front lines of French Canada.